the Chicago Bears and the San Francisco 49ers. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Nissan Cars and Trucks. It's all bad. If you're the quarterback of the Bears, you're just... And looks on from the sidelines. Tom Zack is the quarterback, and he'll be backed up by the rookie Jim Harbaugh. So McMahon on the inactive list. That is not the injured reserve list. So he could come back, and Mike Ditka thinks he'll be able to come back next week when the Bears are home against Seattle. 49ers have won the toss. Good night for football. It's about 50 degrees. It was very blustery in the Bay Area over the weekend with high winds, but it's calmed down now. Just perfect. Sellout crowd, and here we go. The two teams with the best record in the NFL as Butler kicks off. And it's fielded at the seven-yard line by Joe Cribbs. And Cribbs brings it out to the 21-yard line, and two flags go down on the play. Egypt Allen, number 47, makes the stop, and Dick Hantak is the referee. And the call is against the 49ers on the run back. Hantak, in his second year as a ref. the block in the back, on return, number 90, 10-yard penalty, first down. Todd Shell, number 90. I think we'll see Shell right there coming in from the left of the screen on the back of Sean Gale and pushes him to the ground. And the 49ers are going to start off inside their own 10-yard line because of Todd Shell's opening play mistake. 49ers starting from their own nine-yard line, and it's Montana with that short little roll and incomplete. Last week, he completed his first 17. And you'll recall he set an NFL record because he completed his last five the week prior against Cleveland for 22 in a row, second down and 10. And so Montana looking toward the bench with Craig and Rathman behind him, and Craig has been moved to halfback. Rathman doing a great job at fullback. Dwight Clark getting the start, and they begin with double tight end setup. And the revamped offensive line, which we'll detail as we go along. On second and 10. Off the play fake. Montana stepping out to his left. Room to roam and out of bounds at the 17-yard line. So the Bears secondary did its job, but Montana has proven to be very mobile this season. And he's done that so much more this year than he did, of course, last year with the injury, playing back to the way he played in 84. Very mobile quarterback. The Bears now, Hampton comes back. Dan talked about that earlier with McMichael, Perry, and Dent. And then the linebackers, it's Wilson coming back with Singletary, of course, in the middle, and Marshall. The corners have had a tough time this year. They'll be exploited by Rice. You've got Richardson and Jackson with Bell and Dewars in the safeties. Rathman in the game along with Craig in the backfield on third and two with Rice in motion. The fake to Craig. The pass caught by Rathman. First down and a lot more as Rathman goes out of bounds near the 35-yard line. Bumped out by Besty Jackson. The beautiful part of this play is the confusion that's caused by the motion of Jerry Rice. Here's Jerry Rice right on the wing as my telestrator's malfunctioning. We'll get it going. There's Rice going in motion. Now watch. There's Mike Richardson going with Jerry Rice. Rice turns up field and affects screens Richardson, opening up Rathman out into the flat. And, of course, the Bears have the toughest defense in the league against the rush, and the 49ers, that kind of a pass is like a run for them. It is that high of a percentage pass. And Rathman, now you mentioned what a five football player he's turned into. He is an excellent receiver. Gain of 18, first and 10 from the 35. Montana hit as he releases, and the pass a little underthrown and broken up by Besty Jackson. Jerry Rice had gotten behind them, but the pass was underthrown. Second down. Jerry Rice that time, Frank, was open by four or five yards. He ran right by Jackson. Montana just a little late delivering it. Jackson had him by himself, too. He had a little help on the inside in the form of Todd Bell, but, I mean, that if Montana would have reached it a little quicker, it would have been six. Boy, he can fly. He has that long stride and is so deceptive. Defensive backs just are not realizing how quickly he's getting on them. Second and 10, 49ers from their own 35-yard line. That's John Frank in motion. And on the ground, it's Roger Craig swinging to the outside with that high knee movement. And Todd Bell bumps him out of bounds. Jesse Sapolo leading the way. I think the key to tonight's ball game is going to be the San Francisco offensive line and their ability to handle the front seven of the Chicago Bears. Bubba Paris, Jesse Sapolo, Randy Cross, Bruce Colley, and Harris Barton 
you're going to be hearing these names a lot tonight because in situations like this, they've got to keep the Bears from coming up the middle, pressuring Montana. That's the only way they're going to move the ball. On third and five, the Bears rush four, and Montana is able to escape for the first down, sliding out to the 48-yard line. Stopped by Dave Dewerson. This is what he can do, as good as any quarterback in the league. He has not been doing that much of it early in the year, but he started in the last few games last week, particularly against Green Bay. He took off on a draw play. This was not a draw play, obviously, but he, he was under pressure, and he's not afraid to pull it down and run with the football. And just a fine all-around athlete. And it's another dimension when Montana starts to run the football back there. He's averaging, as you see, 4.2 yards per carry this year. Their top running back, Roger Craig, is averaging 3.8. Mix up on the play, and Montana goes down at the 40-yard line. Richard Dent will get credit for the sack on a busted play. Well, it's strictly play action. Richard Dent is going to try to be blocked by both the guards coming out from inside. Then Roger Craig tries to get in late, but Dent is already by him, and Joe Montana sensing... Dent's arrival on the scene does the wide thing and goes down. Bruce Colley was just took the incorrect angle. Richard Dent getting upfield in a hurry. When he wants to get after the quarterback, he's been in Mike Dicka's doghouse. He's out of it with plays like that. This guy can make it happen. Second and 17 from the 40-yard line. And it's Prey out to about the 43. Maurice Douglas comes up from the secondary to make the tackle. It'll be third down and about 14 from the 43-yard line. Mm -hmm. 49ers a little banged up as Mike Ditka looks on from the sideline. Mike Wilson has an ankle injury, the wide receiver, but he's in there right now. Though We do figure to see a lot of Dwight Clark. Wilson lines up as a tight end on the left with Rice to the right. And on third and 14, Montana rolling, looking Rice's way, throwing, and Rice makes the catch at the 40-yard line. Mike Richardson one-on-one -on -one with him, but Rice is able to turn inside, look back, and gain 17 for the first. Jerry Rice, and he had man-on-man -man coverage because it was play action. Number 27 is Mike Richardson. Now there's Rice. And now Richardson has no other way to play him. He's looking at Rice, trying to get a feel of him. Rice puts on the speed, but Richardson had to think he's going to take it all the way on the fly. Gave him just enough yardage. He broke it off to the sidelines. First down, perfectly executed play, and a very safe, high percentage play once again by the 49ers. First and 10 at the 40. That's Dwight Clark in motion, and flags go down because it was Roger Craig who was lined up as a wide receiver to the left who broke across the line. Dick Hantak, we mentioned, is the referee. <laughs> you don't see this very often, Al, where someone lined up in the wide receiver slot just takes off downfield. Roger Craig in that position should be looking at the football. He saw the motion and took off on the motion rather than the snap. Offense, offense receiver, receiver crossed the line and made contact. It is a five-yard penalty against the offense. Repeat the down, first down. Number is 33. Here he is, number 33. Watch the motion man go. Roger Craig just takes off and makes the contact downfield. No, Roger, you're supposed to wait for the snap of the football. Mm -hmm. hey, he had <laughs> Wilbur Marshall out with him a moment ago. He's back out there now, but he's got Jackson, the cornerback. From the same formation on first and 15, too long intended for Rice. Rice had gotten behind Richardson, but Dewerson was also there for support. Covering on the play. Well, Dave Dewerson was there with some support, but Mike Richardson again whiffs at the line of scrimmage on Jerry Rice. You see, Mike is trying to get the good shot on Jerry Rice, but he's not breaking his stride at all. Now, Montana had to throw the ball back to the outside of the field because of Dewerson coming from the inside. Hey, if Dewerson takes some sort of a play action read, isn't there, that's a touchdown for the 49ers. Mike Richardson off to a tough start and getting away with it somewhat. Second and 15 from the 45-yard line. Montana throws to Craig, who makes a juggling catch over the middle to the 42-yard line. Wrapped up there by Mike Singletary. And that'll bring up a third down and 12. So again, a third and long. And the last time the 49ers were in this spot, they went to just the one wide receiver, Rice, and he made the catch along the sideline. And they did it from a rollout action to buy Montana a little more time. And I would not be surprised if we don't see a lot of rollout action tonight against the Bears. 
Bill Walsh, very concerned about the pressure, mostly the pressure against Montana up the middle. And they're lining up to come up the middle. Clark in motion, third and 12. Rice fell down, and the pass incomplete, and so Montana unable to convert here after the 49ers had converted three of three third down opportunities. The pressure put on that time by Otis Wilson as Rice was knocked down on the play. Well, Jerry Rice again, he's lined up, gets the split in between Mike Richardson and Maurice Douglas, and down he goes with the contact. Trying to get off that line, and that prevents a little difficult. Dennis McKinnon has run two punch back for touchdowns. The 49ers have had problems covering kicks this season again. It's been a problem now for a couple of years. Max Runniger to do the booting. And it's McKinnon fielding it at the eight yard line. And bringing it back to the 13. So the Bears will begin deep in their own territory. Darren Como makes the tackle. 11.36 to play in the first quarter. No score. Mike Dicker's team has the football for the first time tonight at the 14 yard line, first and 10. And Matt Suey gets the start at fullback along with Peyton. It's the first time Suey has started this year as Neil Anderson, who's a little banged up, begins the game on the bench. At the 14-yard line, Emery Moorhead, the tight end, goes in motion, and that draws the Niners across the line, led by Michael Carter, and the call is against Chicago. I think Mark Force, number 62, the left guard, moved in his stance. Let's see. Ball start, offense, number 62, five-yard penalty, still first down. The offense for the Chicago Bears with Mike Tomczak at quarterback. Suey and Peyton, the running backs. Gold caught two touchdown passes last week. And there's the offensive line. Jim Covert hurt last week. Back tonight. First and 15 as Walter Payton scrambles. And the play is blown dead. The rest of it doesn't matter. It was blown dead when he was stopped at the 13-yard line. The defensive line for the 49ers, Stover was a holdout, joined the team just prior to the opening game, Carter and Board. And then the linebackers, Turner having another fine season on the outside. Von Horst is replacing Ricky Ellison, who was hurt opening day. McTire and Griffin at the corners, Fuller and Watt are the safeties. Anderson is in the game now for Chicago. On second and 12, it's Neil Anderson taking it out to the 16-yard line. Jim Fonhorst in on the tackle. Anderson has been their main running back, but he's battered and bruised tonight. He's got a bad shoulder. He's got bad ribs. He's been nursing the ribs for quite a while, and the 49ers, I mean, the Bears, rather, are concerned as to how serious Neil Anderson's shoulder injury is. And I guess his not starting tonight is an indication that they're concerned about him taking one good shot tonight and not being here for the playoff. Shotgun, third down and nine from the 16 with McKinnon in motion. And Tom Zach throwing at the 34-yard line, and it's Willie Gall at the 34. No catch, though. Gall came up with a football, but no catch covered by Griffin. It's a simple hook pattern by Willie Galt, and I think we see Mike Dicka's opinion as to whether or not it was a catch. Working against Don Griffin, number 29, and look at the contact before the ball gets there. That's an interference call all the way against Griffin, although no flag, he clearly hits Galt before the arrival of the football. And that's what Ditka was complaining about bitterly on the sidelines. He was, it happened right in front of him, and it was interference. Oh, well, I guess it was. Brian Wagner to do the punting. Dana McLemore backing up, calls for a fair catch at the 41-yard line. So the 49ers will have the football for the second time after a 43-yard Wagner kick and 10-14 to play in a scoreless first period. Look again, Willie Galt number 83, and watch Griffin. Good position, but he lined it up right against the shoulder, hit, made the contact before the ball got there. That was interference, and they got away with it. 
49ers had the ball for 12 plays on their last drive, but were forced to punt. Now they get it back at their own 41. No score early in the first period. And Roger Craig bursts through the middle and takes it out to the 48-yard line, where he's tackled by Mike Singletary. Now, the home field advantage, perhaps at stake. Certainly, uh, this game very big in determining what will happen. The 49ers under Bill Wall, seven postseason games either in this area or inside, a perfect 7-0. Three postseason games in cold-weather cities, two in New York, one in Washington. They lost all of them. So that's what it's meant through the Wall years for the 49ers. Very significant. On second and three, it's Rackman getting across the 50 to the 49-yard line, close to a first down as Dewerson comes up to make the stop. Tom Rathman into the starting lineup shortly after the strike. That moved Roger Craig to halfback, and the 49ers have flourished with the move. And an offensive line that's been totally rejuggled, revamped because of injuries to Farnhorst at right tackle, Quillen at center, McIntyre at left guard, and as you know, Dan, uh, it's tougher to pass block with new people, but this team has really been blocking well for the run. Yeah, they really have, and, and really, that is, uh, continuity is so important. These guys have got five games together, and they've already exceeded everyone's expectation. But tonight, by far and away, they're toughest set. On first down, Roger Craig has another first down. Craig gets inside the 30, the 25 down to the 23-yard line. Tackled by Dave Dewerson. What a block by Rathman ahead of Craig. The Nebraska connection, both youngsters from Nebraska, and watch Roger Craig follow Rathman and cover up the football. There is the lead blocker, number 69, Colley, with a good block. Rathman out in front, and then Craig breaks it back to the inside. And this is Roger Craig's high knee action. He gets into traffic. Up they come. They break tackles. And it's Dave Dewerson that has to come all the way across and save a touchdown. On first and 10 now, it's John Frank, the tight end. Frank, who caught two last week at Green Bay, but fumbled both away, holds on here as he takes the ball down to the 16-yard line. I think we're seeing an excellent illustration of something the 49ers want to prove tonight. This game has been billed as power versus finesse. You come out here and you talk to the 49er players like we did yesterday, they don't want to hear anything about power versus finesse. Mm -hmm. They say we can hit just as hard as the Bears, we can be as physical as the Bears, and are trying to prove it now. Second and one as they spotted at the 14, and Tom Rackman seeks the first down and should have it, and does. One thing the 49ers didn't figure to be able to do, and very few teams do figure to be able to run against Chicago, but Roger Craig able to get loose for 26 yards, and that was Craig's longest run of the season. 49ers two times out of three when they get inside the 20, take it in for a touchdown. Second best mark in the league. From the 12, Montana trips. Down he goes, back at the 20, clutching his knee as he bumped into Roger Craig. And Candlestick Park becomes silent. Montana is in obvious pain. And I don't know whether it was a collision or not. He just seemed to pull away and all of a sudden pull up. And, of course, on the sidelines, quickly, it'll be Steve Young getting a word from Bill Walsh. But you know there is so much concern on the part of Bill Walsh because this is the man who makes it happen for the 49ers. Well, it's a play-action fake, and there is, there is contact. Now watch Joe Montana take it, come out to his right. Here's going to come the fake right here to Roger Craig. Watch their feet. He hits the back, it appears, of Craig's oh, left foot. Hyperextended the left leg. And down he goes. And unbelievably, Joe Montana is down on the ground, hurt, executing a play action fake without even coming anywhere near a Chicago Bear. And unbelievably, in this classic matchup, you've got Montana. His immediate future, at least as far as tonight is concerned, in question. And Jim McMahon in street clothes. And Joe Montana having the best year of any quarterback in the National Football League, the best year of his career, and another look at it from behind the play-action pick. Watch Montana's left leg as he makes a little bit of a contact with Craig. It throws him off balance. The left leg is hyperextended, and Dan, I think you've probably gone through a little bit of that, and the first thing it does, it really scares you. You well, think it's totally come apart. 
and sometimes it's not quite as bad as you think it is initially. Good to play this game. It really takes very little out of the ordinary to cause some damage. And Steve Young right now is over on the sidelines talking to Bill Walsh. And five of seven, what that means is that's not much of a year, folks. It's a nice percentage, but it's not a lot of work. It was one game against New Orleans when he got to start. Montana began that game on the bench, and so Joe Montana has to be helped off the field with seven and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. That means Steve Young will come out. He's not played that much. Five or seven for the season. Uh, had a touchdown pass. Did start the New Orleans game. Now we got a concussion in that, and Montana had to come in and relieve him. Young picked up during the offseason, and then the 49ers were able to deal Jeff Kemp to Seattle. And so here he is, the left-hander, out of Brigham Young, who picks up for Montana at the 20-yard line, where the 49ers have it second down at 18. Officially, Dave Dewerson gets credit for a sack on Montana on the last play. Second and 18, and it's Young rolling left. Getting inside the 20, inside the 10, the 5, and Young barrels down to the 1. Well, the, the Bears just found something out that Steve Young may run better than any quarterback in the National Football League. It's probably between him and John Elway, but this guy can motor, and what a great call coming right out with the play action bootleg all the way. A superb call by Bill Walsh. Let's look at it again. He was looking downfield, did not have the time to throw the football. There comes the pressure, gets it from Richard Dent, pulls it down, and as you mentioned, good athlete, a lot better runner than people give him credit for. If you watch some of the USFL a few years ago at the LA Express, he was remarkable. I watched him in high school in Greenwich High School. He can do it all as an athlete. First and goal, San Francisco at the Chicago two-yard line. Fake to Craig, and then the pass is incomplete. No 49er was there. Only Raffin was close, but two Bears were there, Marshall and Dewerson. When Young runs, though, as mobile as he is and as much of a dimension as he can add to that attack, Walsh has to have his heart in his throat because they have no other quarterback. Look at this rush here by Richard Dent. He's going to get a hand right in, right in Young's face. Give him that shove, and I'll tell you why. That's venting of frustration because Richard Dent made a critical error in letting Steve Young get outside of him on a play where Dent has contained. That's why the 49ers are down here on the goal line because of Dent's mistakes. And that is not the best way to go about rectifying a mistake. Pass to Rice. Caught for the touchdown. And it ties a National Football League record. The motion of Jerry Rice, how his motion opened up a reception for Tom Rathman in the flat. Here's Rice in motion again, coming across, but out into the flat, and this time the Bears are going to be slow on the coverage. Again, the motion before sets up this play, Frank. And not the easiest pass to throw for the left-handed Steve Young, but he was right on target with it as Rice has tied a record. And with Runniger having to hold the punter for Wershing's extra point, it's good. He ties a mark held by Elroy Crazy Legs Hirsch and Buddy Dial 11 games in a row with a touchdown reception. But a very great. awkward way to throw it, Dan, but he pulls it off. A great look of how everything Bill Walsh does is by design. Elroy Hirsch got a touchdown pass in the final game of the 1950 season, then the first 10 and 51, and Buddy Dial in 59 and 60 had caught. Touchdown passes, and Jerry Rice ties that mark as Gentry runs the kick back to the 25-yard line. And a first down there for Chicago. There it is. Hirsch with the Rams, Dial with the Steelers at that point, and Jerry Rice. And that's 16 touchdown passes this season for Jerry Rice, and that's only two short of the... NFL Mark killed by Mark Clayton of Miami. Buddy Dial was one the Giants let get away. Former teammate of mine, then turned out to be a great Steeler receiver. Mike Tomczak and the Bears at the 25-yard line. And that's McKinnon out of this odd formation in motion, and the pass is tipped by 
Keena Turner. It'll be second and ten. Having one of his best here, and there's been a lot of great years. If he was not so disciplined in their defense, he might well be on the way to the Pro Bowl, but he is not the big name linebacker. You're not going to hear as much about Keena Turner as you're going to hear about Lawrence Taylor and the type of linebackers that they just turn loose all the time. He is a very disciplined linebacker in the overall scheme of things for the 49ers. And here is Joe Montana. The report on Montana twisted knee, and they're saying it's possible he'll be back tonight. On second down and 10, the pass is caught by Emery Moorhead, the tight end, and he takes it out to the 35-yard line, and that's very close to a first down and is. First and 10, Chicago he is stopped by Jim Fonhorst. Backup quarterbacks on both sides now, and Tom Zach, as we recall, you probably recall the opening in game against the Giants. He had a great night that night. And starting for McMahon, 20 of 34, almost 300 yards, a couple of touchdowns. It's really to it's really difficult to classify the two guys together, though, Frank. This guy, Mike Tomczak, has so much more experience than Steve Young. The Bears are are really not at a disadvantage with him running the show. From the 36-yard line, Tomczak going deep for Gold, who turns the other way and can't make the catch. He had gotten behind Don Griffin, but almost a sensational catch by Willie Gold who caught two touchdown passes last week against the Vikings. One of the toughest things to do as a receiver is to alter your route after the ball is in the air when you completely have to pivot your body. And look at Willie Galt working the inside of the field, have to change direction, twist his shoulders, go back to the outside and almost come up with the ball. If that ball is maybe just maybe a foot or two back towards him, this guy comes up with a highlight film catch. Second and ten, Bears at the 36, 5.08 to play first quarter. That's Peyton in motion. Draw play. Anderson, he takes it out to the 43-yard line, and that will bring up a third down and a long two. Now, the further report on Montana pulled left hamstring as well as a twisted knee, and now they are telling us from the bench his return tonight is doubtful. So Montana sits and looks from the bench as the Bears come up third down and two out of the shotgun at the 44-yard line. Gentry in motion. And the pass caught by Gentry for a first down. And he's taken down and flags go down to the 47-yard line as Jeff Fuller tried to wrap him around the helmet. And he got the face mask as he was attempting to make that tackle. Well, if the motion works for the 49ers, the Bears are going to come back and say, we'll use a little of it our own, and it worked that time. Face mask, defense number 49, 15-yard penalty, first down. Pretty safe to say. When you see this many flags come flying in, you're going to get the intentional face mask, the 15-yarder. Jeff Fuller with the right arm and the right hand right on the face mask of Dennis Gentry, and not much of an attempt to let it go. But I've seen more flagrant ones than that that only drew a five-yard penalty. From this angle, no question he had the face mask. The only argument is whether it's five or 15. It was 15. Two flags went down at the 32-yard line. Take the paint all the time in the world for Tom Zach, and the catch is made at the 18-yard line. McKinnon stayed in bounds, they say. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. That's nice footwork. Good work by McKinnon. He is a man who can work so well underneath, underneath a Willie Gall. He has the, the good moves, and that time. Play action to Walter Payton, and McKinnon is wide open. Let's take a look again. The play action giving Tom Zek all the time he would want. We'll look at it from the reverse angle, and McKinnon coming back at an acute angle, giving Tom Zek the target, and then a mm, lot of poise, both feet inbounds, gets the first down inside the 20. Good execution. 49ers lead 7-0, but the Bears moving at the 18-yard line, and Tom Zek, who's getting fabulous protection, throws, and it's picked off in the end. Zone, but a flag is down as Tom Zach got hit back at the 25. Griffin made the interception, but there's a marker down back at the 25-yard line. Well, holding against the Bears will be declined. This is the 49ers ball all the way. 
Griffin played that very well. He had been beaten a short while ago by Willie Galt on the fly pattern. He played that absolutely perfectly. Holding offense number 62. Penalty is declined. Interception with a touchback. First down. Well, the reason that that play looks so simple is that the bare receiver that Mike Tomczak is attempting to throw the ball to is lying flat on the ground. Willie Galt slips as he makes an attempt to come back for the ball, and Don Griffin is all alone in his attempt for the interception that he makes easily. Galt was flat on the field. So Griffin gives the Niners the ball back at their own 20-yard line with 4.06 to go in the period, and it's Roger Craig for a first down and a gain of 15. Stopped by Dave Dewerson. And Craig, who'd been limited this season to 3.8 yards a carry, has busted through twice tonight. The thing you do when you establish a run game like the 49ers are doing, you're going to slow that pass rush down of the Chicago Bears. They're going to have to start thinking run before they can go with the all-out pass rush. And once you establish a little bit of a ground game, you can make them play an entirely different football game, and that's what the 49ers want to do. And that draw is a lot more effective when you're going Richard Dent's direction because of his love to get after the quarterback and get upfield. First down, San Francisco at the 35-yard line. And Craig this time meets the entire line led by Dent. That's what Bill Waltz can scratch off that pad, Dan. <laughs> but maybe the look there was maybe pick up a yard or two, but to see a coverage, see a reaction. Now I see Richard Dent burned last time on the draw where he was a good three yards upfield. This time a little more cognizant of what's going on out there. Throws out that right leg and gets back in on the play. It's tough to go to the well too many times in a row against, a, against an all-pro guy like Dent. Second and ten, Roger Craig is out. Joe Cribbs is in there with Rackman as the running back. Young, flag is thrown as he throws it away and is a marker back at the 33-yard line. We may get a holding call against Jesse Sapolo working against Richard Perry. Called all the way from the sidelines. I think we're going to get a good look at this, and it's a good thing that... Perry almost injured. He was clipped from behind as well. Holding offense, number 61, 10-yard penalty, repeat the down, second down. And there is Montana being taken back to the dressing room. Now watch Richard Perry make the quick outside move against Apollo. The arm over. Here comes the grab of the jersey, and then he's going to follow it through actually getting Perry from behind right on the back of the leg and whoo that's where a guy can get hurt but the flag was thrown for the hole on second and 20 huge hole for Rathman to the 39 yard line 49ers cross him up and Rathman turns it into a nice game and teams don't run like this on Chicago Rathman has made to this offense for the 49ers. Not only as a good blocker, excellent receiver, and there is a little cross block. You get Barton, the rookie, coming back, making the trap block absolutely perfectly executed, and the big pickup. So they go from second and 20 to third and six at the 39. Two minutes to play first quarter. San Francisco ahead 7 0, and Montana and McMahon gone. Young nearly has. for Roger Craig. Fourth down. And this time, here comes the blitz. Look at number 22, Dave Dewerson, here at the bottom of the screen. Wilbur Marshall, 58 to the inside. Bubba Paris gets out late, cleans off Marshall, but still, Steve Young has to throw the ball under pressure, and that's what they count on. You get that pressure, you can't pick them all up. That was almost six points. Max Runniger to kick. Dennis McKinnon stands back at his own 20-yard line. Bears trying to set up a return. It's a low kick from the 25. McKinnon taken down at the 29-yard line by number 99, the linebacker Michael Walter. 143 to play first quarter. Set. The way he runs, the bootleg, the play action, he can do what Joe Montana could do in that in that set of circumstances. Well, that's why they got him. Here's Peyton losing the football. It's loose at the 18-yard line. Recovered at the 16-yard line. The 49ers think they have it. They think the
the play is still alive and there's no signal yet. They do have it. Apparently there was a scramble for it. Whatever 49er came up with it, there was no bear around to touch him or to make him down at that position. And he was able to take it even deeper into bear territory. And I think it's nose guard. I think in on the play is Michael Carter who beats Jay Hilgenberg to get into the backfield and get right in Peyton's face and cause the mishandling of the football. Number 95, Michael Carter. He's working against Tom Thayer after Jay Hilgenberg already on the ground, and his right arm just pops the football right out of Walter's arm. And then the scramble. Kevin Fagan, number 75, the first 49er there, and boy, the Bears making it tough on themselves. And that gives the 49ers a first down just outside the 10-yard line as Young off balance has to unload incomplete. Pressured by Richard Dent, who gets in there again. Pick number 95. And a safety blitz. Dewerson was also there. Hard to pick him up, but that time he had everyone in the pattern. The tight end had released, and they bring Dewerson, and you just don't have enough people. Well, if there's one change, I think, in the way the Bears will approach the 49ers defensively now is I think they're going to have much more of a tendency to come with that all-out blitz against Young rather than Montana. Montana's seen it a million times before and has burned them. Young, hey, I'd come after this guy with eight guys every time. Second and ten, just outside the ten. Quarterback draw, and Young is not in yet. He is stopped at the half-yard line. And Dwight Clark leading the 49er case. He wants the touchdown. But Wilbur Marshall gets credit for the tackle. He was tackled just short of the goal line. Montana last week scored on a similar play against Green Bay, and here's Young running the quarterback draw and nearly getting in. And it's Randy Cross to center blocking back against William Perry. That's Perry we see. See Cross, number 51, takes William right out of the play. And Steve Young, I told you this guy can run, explodes for the goal line. Clearly down, though, reached the ball into the end zone, but after, he was already down. They're booing it here in San Francisco. Booing, but, booing, but, booing the replay. Meanwhile, it's not even a first down because the ball was just outside the 10. They spotted inside the 1, and it'll be third down in about 2 inches. And it's an excellent spot by the officials. No way is that a touchdown. His body's on the ground when he reaches the ball across the plane of the end zone. Well, what a block inside by Randy Cross on William Perry. To and Sapulu, boy, that they did. Randy Cross, who up until five weeks ago was playing in the guard position. Quinlan got hurt. He moved to that center, and he was playing Pro Bowl type center. Just to not getting the recognition. Third down, two inches for the first, and here's Craig, who doesn't get it. So it's going to be fourth down and a yard for the first down and about a yard and a half for the touchdown as Wilbur Marshall makes the tackle and Bill Walsh for the moment sends in the field goal unit. Bears so tough when you get down close. Yeah, ask Minnesota. Ask Minnesota. Had a first down at the one yard line and wound up losing the football on a fourth down attempt. And of course the Bears went on to win it with the last 40 seconds of the game. With Montana out, you see Runniger to hold as he did on the extra point. So the 49ers have to go to their number two holder for Wershing. 20 yard field goal from the 10. Good snap, good placement, good kick. So the Bears stave off seven as the 49ers have to settle for cashing in for three with 13 seconds to go in the period. Once Will, Bill Walsh knew that he had the football, he went right back to that sheet. There is something this man, everything he does is calculated, is planned to get a reaction. Maybe it's a play he'll even waste to get a shooting the way a 49er quarterback has to play. You have to be able to run. You've got to be able to run those quarterback draws. The bootlegs, the play action. That's a luxury a lot of head coaches in this league don't have. Worshing's kick into the end zone. Sanders to run it out. Past the 20. And out to the 25-yard line. And a marker goes down. Darren Como again makes the tackle. His second on special teams. And the initial indication is against Chicago. And that's a long kickoff for Wershing, who normally boots him down to around the 10. Illegal block in the back. 
on the return, number 97, penalized half the distance to the goal, first down. Sean Smith. Bears are doing everything in the world they can to lose this. They have met the enemy. He is us. You know, it's funny. The Bears play so well in the daytime. Sunday afternoons and a couple of Sunday nights in there, 35 and 2. Four and three on Monday night football over their last 45 games. Well, they don't get Detroit and Tampa Bay on Monday night. You bet. From the eight-yard line, Tom Zach turns, gives the ball to Peyton. And Walter is able to slither his way out to the 13-yard line on what will be the final play of the first quarter. Jim McMahon has to look on in street clothes. Joe Montana is back in the dressing room. And we played the first 15 minutes of Candlestick Park with the 49ers leading by a score of 10 to nothing. Back at Candlestick Park in San Francisco, Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff. The two teams with the best records in the National Football League. Each come in 10 and 2. End of one, it's 10 0 49ers. Chicago, as we start the second quarter, has it second and five from the 14 yard line. Mike Tomzak, the quarterback. Anderson comes out to the 18 yard line. It will be third down and one. 49ers had the ball for 11 minutes in the first quarter. And rushing yardage, 116 yards. Now, that is against the number one defense in the league against the rush. And it's the most against the Bears this year. And that's for an entire game. The 49ers do it in one quarter. Set the record for 87 against the Bears in an entire game. That's an impressive first quarter, say the least. Third and a long yard, and Anderson gets that and more, taking the ball out to the 20-yard line. First down, Chicago. He is stopped by Jeff Stover. There are Anderson's numbers for the season. He is second in average in the NFL, second to only the Vikings' Darren Nelson. And this will be, according to Walter Payton, his last year. Next year, we'll see Anderson and probably Thomas Sanders forming the new Chicago backfield. There's no question that Thomas Sanders will be the running mate of Neil Anderson. Neil Anderson will move over to the running back position. He's the fullback for Walter Payton. And here he is. Sanders takes it out to the 24-yard line. He is stopped by Jim Fonhorst after a gain of four. Thomas Sanders in his third year out of Texas A&M. And there he is when he gets the football. He averages better than five yards a carry. Now what's going to be different tonight versus next year is that Sanderson, uh, Sanders rather, is going to play tailback tonight, and Neil Anderson is going to stay in his fullback position. Mike Ditka doesn't want to take Anderson out of the fullback role, have him switching back and forth, but next year, it'll be a role reversal. Sanders will go to fullback, Anderson will be the running back. Second and six from the 24-yard line, and the play is whistled dead as Carter and Stover both came across. Well, well, start. Offense, number 57, five-yard penalty, repeat second down. Drawn by Tom Thayer. Thayer misses the snap count by a mile and goes all the way across the line of scrimmage and makes contact. Get a little excitable down here in the trenches. Sometimes as an offensive lineman, you swear you heard two when the count was three. Well, Tom Thayer heard two on that play. Dead play. The clock never runs, and... That's a five-yard penalty, and you know everybody's looking at you. Second and 11. Bears from their own 19-yard line. San Francisco leading 10 nothing. Tom Zach pressured. Throws. Knocked down at the 28-yard line. Nearly picked off by Tim McHire. Intended for Dennis McKinnon. Mike Tomzak has to be careful. Now, he shows great athletic ability in avoiding the rush. His pocket is there initially. He's flushed out right off the bat by Michael Carter. Then Jeff Stover has a shot at it. But okay, look what he did. He fought off the rush, got himself in a position to throw the ball away and get back to the line of scrimmage. But instead, he almost makes a costly mistake as McHire almost makes the interception. That's, he did everything right. Mike Tomzak just up to the end when he made a mistake. Shotgun third and 11 with four wide receivers. Four-man rush and a near sack, but he dumps it to the safety valve. Anderson, and he has 
there's a first down out to the 32-yard line popped by Jeff Fuller. But Tom Zack able to get it away after it nearly went down. Anderson, the safety valve, picks up the first at the 32-yard line. Larry Roberts coming in, putting the pressure on. You want to see why Neil Anderson is wide open? I want you to watch him right here. He's going to go up here and fall down and lie on the ground. Watch Neil Anderson get up here and go to the ground. Then he's going to get back up, hustle, get back into play, and get someplace where Mike Tomczak can see him. Great, great effort that time by Anderson. And it turns a third and 11 into a first and 10 from the 32. Off the play fake. Tomczak has it picked off at the 45-yard line by Todd Schell. And Tomczak was shaken up. He was really hammered as he released the ball. And Todd Schell, who... He came off injured reserve a couple of weeks ago, gets an interception. I don't think Tom Zach even saw it. Again, pressure. We talk about the Bears' defense, but the 49ers are way up there, too, in the standings. Fifth overall. And with Dwayne Board, number 76, breaks his block and gets into Tom Zach just as he releases the football. And I don't think that Todd Shell was even in the picture, at least in Tom Zach's picture. We'll see it from this angle. The reverse angle is Mike Tom Zach. Todd Shell coming out to the inside, never even entered Tom Zach's field of vision. But again, Dwayne Board forced the play by breaking in and beating the block of Paul Blair, who's playing now left tackle instead of Jim Tober. Young goes right to the air or tries to on first down. Caught by Rice. Nice nifty move inside to pick up the first down at the 28-yard line. The Bears have turned the ball over on their last three possessions. Two interceptions and a fumble, and the 49ers lead 10-0 and are on the move again. Jerry Rice said he can do it all. What an athlete he is. Sets up in position. Young gets away from the pressure, moves around that athletic ability, finds Rice, and then Rice breaks it back to the inside, gets the first down yardage and more. The Bears came with a free safety blitz. Dave Dorson was the guy chasing Young, but Dorson stumbled and fell, and Young got the ball away. First and 10, 49ers at the Chicago 29. Young going for Rice, tipped away. Ball hung, and Mike Richardson able to bat it away. It'll be second down. Richard Dent applying the pressure that time. Again, Dent bursting through. Well, Richard Dent is going around Bubba Paris like Big Bubba isn't even there. Bubba, who has been known to enter that 330-pound plateau, at times has picked up the nickname, much to his chagrin, of Blubba here in San Francisco. And that time, he's just stationary on the line of scrimmage, and Richard Dent is whipping him like nobody's business. Second and 10 at the 29-yard line. at the 31-yard line. Richardson comes up to make the stop. Vince Tobin, the defensive coordinator for the Bears, and his assistant, Dennis McKinnon. <laughs> Interesting, Vince was a defensive coordinator with Jim Morrow with the Baltimore and Philadelphia Stars back in 84 and 85 when they were ranked right at the top of the USFL in defense. We say that facetiously about McKinnon. Many of you read about it. McKinnon criticizing the Bear defensive scheme a couple of weeks ago. I thought Mike was pretty funny, Mike Dick, uh, when he said, well, Dennis McKinnon, at least I didn't realize I made that many mistakes until he was uh, correcting me. A third and 11, Young on a quarterback draw, takes it down to the 28-yard line. Singletary and Dent make the tackle. And now you're right on the borderline. Ray Wershing has never kicked a 50-yard field goal in his home park. And there is an injured bear. And we'll get the identification in a moment. It's number 58, and that would be Wilbur Marshall. It's a 45-yard kick. And Wershing's kick is good, just good, by about a yard. Not one of your power kickers, but very accurate when you get within his range. I said he was right on the border, and indeed he was. But he crosses the border, and it's 13 to nothing, 49ers. All too short. Cut short by injuries, but not short on thrills. 
Gail Sayers, youngest man ever inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, once scored six touchdowns in a game against the 49ers back in 1965. Worsing kicking off and a short kick fielded at the 12-yard line. Dennis Gentry brings it back out to the 32. And so after Worsing kicks his longest field goal of the season, 45 yards, a short kick, and Chicago has it first and 10 at the 32. Worsing hit the field goal farther than he hit that kickoff, as we've been informed that Jimbo Covert has a knee sprain. And it's questionable as to whether he'll see any more action today. And Paul Blair takes his spot on the offensive line. First and 10 at the 32-yard line with Emory Moorhead in motion. Tom Zach, who's been erratic, throws, and the catch is made at the 48-yard line by Willie Gold. And Gold has now caught a pass in 32 straight games, and Chicago has a first down in San Francisco territory. 19-yard game. That will just barely hurt the average of Willie Gold. He's averaging a little over 22 yards a carry, and shaken up on the play was McKire, the cornerback. He was trying to run with Willie in a man-for-man -man situation. And Torrey Nixon will come in to take his spot at the left corner. First and 10 at the 48. Pate in motion. Draw. Anderson going nowhere. You saw Gold's average, and it was starred second in the NFL. Best average in the league belongs to Gary Clark. And what a day he had yesterday against Dallas. We talked about the 49ers offensive line being beat up. Well, the word that Covert had to come out because of the bad ankle sort of focuses on their offensive line they've had a lot of problems along that offensive line Keith Van Horn's been playing hurt Horst is playing with a broken rib and they're having their own problems and it's really affecting the way they have been able to run the ball second and ten at the 48 yard line Tom Zach pumps looking for gold and gold does make the catch at the six yard line Willie gold Staying inbounds, Don Griffin covering on the play, and it takes it down to the six. Great catch. And this is going to really be a close call. Let's take a good look at it. Working against Don Griffin, Willie takes the outside move and just runs a straight fly pattern, but I'm not sure he had both feet inbounds. They're looking at it, too. One, two. That one's on the line. At least from that angle, that didn't look like a solid catch. And I think they're going to review this. They they're, are. They're yes. stopping the Bears from coming to the line of scrimmage. They certainly are. That didn't look like a catch from that angle. It looked like the second foot came down right on the line of scrimmage. Norm Schachter is the replay official tonight. All right, look at it here. Now, when does he have possession? There's the ball. Right foot down inbounds. Where does the left foot come down? Boy, from there, it looks right. Right out of bounds. Well, that, Norm Schachter is looking at that. They're going to bring it back. There was no contact made. They couldn't say he was pushed out. Good move by Tom Zach. A little pump fake, and it kind of froze Ronnie Lott, who was the free safety. And then, obviously, Don Griffin was expecting help deep. Ronnie Lott went for that little pump fake by Tom Zach and changed his angle, and he was unable to get there. If this is ultimately ruled an incompletion, it really does negate a superb throw by Mike Tom Zach and... Just some kind of effort by Willie Gall, who's been doing that all night. Remember his effort on the far side of the field in the first quarter. Bring and they're going to bring this one back to no one's surprise. For further review, it is ruled the second step was out of bounds. Incomplete pass. And there goes a 41-yard pickup. So if you are a proponent of instant replay, an excellent example of how it can work. And rather quickly. And if you're a 49er fan, an excellent example. They hadn't have brought that back. These 49er fans might have overrun the instant replay official's position. They had a chance to look at it. It was very obvious. Yeah. What a goal. We might see him in Calgary, Al. He uh, is a bobsledder by avocation. And a good one. He's 
Worked out with the U.S. bobsled team. They would like to have him. He'd like to do it. Could be he'll be up there. He has a great speed, and that, of course, is the key to the bobsled. Bo Jackson has his hobby, and so does golf. <laughs> At the 48-yard line, third down and nine for the Bears instead of first and goal. Four receivers with Tom Zach in the shotgun. And he runs the quarterback draw and takes it to the 38-yard line, stretching and trying to get the first down and appears to be a little short. He has to get it just inside the 38. He reached out, and they'll spot it just outside the 38-yard line. Well, we're seeing more running quarterbacks tonight than we've seen in some time in the National Football League. That time out of the shotgun formation, Mike Contact comes up a little bit short, and when you're down by 13 points, you, you got to go for it. And you got a great defense, and you do go for it. The Bears have converted on 10 of 18 fourth down opportunities this season, so there are no strangers to this play. Fourth and one from the 38. Anderson in motion, and it's fumbled on the snap. And if they spot it, the 38 yard line he doesn't have it he has to get it inside the 38 by about six inches he had time to recover and still attempt to move it forward well Mike is strange on short yardage fourth down short yardage you fumble the football you most certainly should not have the time to pick it up and and even try to get the yardage for it. Well, the ball just went right down to the feet of Tom Zach as we get this call. See, Tom Zach has to be the Fourth guy to recover fumble, it. Fumble by the quarterback, recovered by the quarterback, made necessary yardage, first down. See, the key here is no one can recover that fumble on fourth down other than Mike Tom Zach. If you fumble it on fourth down, you must be the guy to recover it. One of your teammates can't recover it and get the yardage necessary for a first down. Well, look they at this. Even, they didn't even know he had fumbled it. Uh, look, there was the contact made by Carter when he was down, and yeah. I'm not quite sure they should have given him that. And then they let the play continue, and that's why he got the first down. So they're at the 37-yard line, and a whistle. They might look down. at that again. I think they may have blown that play dead just so that they could take another look upstairs. There's a flag down, but they may have blown it dead just to take another look. Full start. Nope. Offense, number 68, five-yard penalty, first down. That's Paul Blair. Maybe they ought to take another look anyway. Yeah, that flag came from the side judge as he saw Paul Blair, who's lined up at the left tackle, make that false start. <laughs> You know, we did have a good look at that when Mike Tomczak went down for that football. It appeared there was contact, which would down the play right there. And they're telling us from the replay booth it was not conclusive. So the play stands as is. Chicago still has the ball, obviously, and it's now first and 15. Bears sputtering and stumbling offensively, trailing 13-0. is made by Peyton at the 34-yard line. It'll be second and seven. Let's go back and set the scene again. It's fourth down and one, and Mike Tomczak is going to fumble the snap. Never makes connections at getting the ball from Jay Hilgenberg. Okay, there's the ball in plain view, and Tomczak's going to go down and get it, and when he gets it, it appears that he was making contact with Michael Carter, the nose guard. I guess the ruling there is going to be that he didn't have possession when contact was made with Carter. When he did get possession of the ball, he freed himself from Carter and went, that, went ahead and picked up the first down. On second and seven, the catch is made by Gold at the 23-yard line for a first down. And you think Don Griffin is not giving Gold a little room? He was five, six, seven yards off Gold, who has beaten him now several times deep. Had one call back, had one that he almost made a spectacular catch on, and that time Griffin just gave him all the room he could ever want. There is Jim McMahon, and Mike Ditka put him on that five-man inactive list today because he did not want to be tempted to put him in the ball game with that hamstring and cause further damage and maybe lose him for longer than he'll be out, which should be two to three weeks. First and ten, Chicago at the San Francisco 23-yard line. Knocked down, nearly picked off. Higher. Intended for Dennis McKinnon. 
Jackson. 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 You get the feeling that Mike Tomczak might be locking in on his receivers and just looking to one side of the field. This is Dennis McKinnon who's working to his right. Tim McKire reading the quarterback, reading the football all the way, just is able to make an early break on the football, not even playing McKinnon. And you almost got a sense in looking at that replay that he's looking right into the eyes of Mike Tomczak reading that play prematurely. Second and 10 at the 23. 49ers leading 13-0, 5.54 to play in the half. Tomczak lofting it for goal. No. Covered by Griffin. It's a timing pattern, and of course we see it so many times now in pro football. You get the defensive back on the inside, and of course he's either going to play you, and this time it's going to be Griffin playing Galt. He sees Galt looking back to the passer, and that's when he turns around, and that's one that Galt could have held on to. Yes, I think your observation there is correct, Frank. That's a ball that Willie Galt should catch. Does he I nick the ball? Yeah, the little oh, nick on it. At the last yep. moment, Don Griffin alters the course of the football just enough to force Willie Galt into dropping the ball. Good play by Griffin. That was very tough defense. Third and ten, and it's Anderson out of the shotgun, taking the handoff and getting only one. Stopped by Keena Turner and Jeff Stover. Turner having a Pro Bowl time season, and so Ditka tries to cross up the 49ers, but they don't fight. And they'll have to send in Butler to try to kick one from 40 yards out. They'll spot it at the 30-yard line. He is 14 of 14 this season inside 40. And this one spotted just outside the 30-yard line. Kevin Butler, who had been automatic, as we said, 14 of 4. CBC Sports exclusive is brought to you by 5-10 to play. First half, San Francisco at its own 23-yard line. Steve Young, Montana, went out in the first quarter with a twisted knee and a pulled hamstring. Jim McMahon, not even in uniform for the game. Pulled hamstring, Mike Ditka expects him to play next Sunday in Chicago against Seattle. Second and ten at the 23. For Rice. Rice tried to draw an interference call, but the officials weren't biting. Covered by Vesty Jackson. That time Steve Young airs it out for Jerry Rice. And you know, when you've got a talent like Rice, the temptation is to throw a half a dozen of these a game, but played pretty well by Vesty Jackson. You saw him give a lot of ground right off the bat. I don't know if he saw something where he sensed that it was going to be a long pass, but Vesty Jackson went into his back pedal before the snap of the ball and played it well. I think Steve Young had read a blitz, changed off. It looked as though he changed it off, and of course, reading the blitz, he thought he'd get man-to-man. -man. He didn't. It was Vesty Jackson getting help from the inside and good help from Todd Bell. Third and ten. Cray goes in motion after nearly fourth starting. And the slant is dropped at the 33 by Dwight Clark. And so the 49ers, for one of the few times tonight, unable to move at all. And in comes Roniger to punt. Well, give the Bears some credit defensively. It's almost gotten to the point you have to sense the way the Bears are stuttering offensively that in that defensive huddle the Bears are saying if we're going to win this football game we've got to make something happen. We can't let them get first downs and we've got to force the 49ers into some sort of a turnover. Runniger, an angled kick that goes out of bounds at the 36 yard line. Fits and starts 13 to nothing San Francisco. Chicago has it at the 35 yard line tonight. The 49er Defense doing the job against Chicago on the ground, holding them to less than three yards a carry. And they start here on first and ten from the 35-yard line with Peyton as the tailback. He stays in the block. And Tom Zach throws and has it picked off. Third interception, Michael Walter. 
inside the 40, down to the 35-yard line. And that's three interceptions and a fumble recovery for the 49ers. And a marker is down on the run back at the 40. And again, it's a question of Mike Tomzak not seeing somebody coming back out from underneath, getting in front of a receiver. This it's one almost, he should have seen, though, Dan. Yeah, Michael Walter, we're going to see, is working back to the inside. Mike Tomzak never sees him. Look at 99, working out underneath, inside. Cap Bozo, the intended receiver. Ball poorly thrown. Michael Walter makes a nice play back from the inside. And Mike Tomzak, a tough, gritty competitor, is capable of making some horrendous throws at times. We have a low block on number 18 of Chicago. Penalty, unsportsmanlike, first down. That's Tomzak. That's one of the new rules this year. On a change of possession like that, on an interception, you must block above the waist. You're not supposed to be flying low in there. And how does Mike Tomzak get called? He may just have been ducking to get out of the way. <laughs> low. And that's going to be a 15-yard penalty, but I thought the intention... That's a 49er football. The 49ers are the ones doing the blocking. The Bears are the yeah. one who cannot block. And the 49ers, Mike Tomzak, how the heck can that <laughs> Was just protecting himself. Exactly. I just mean, ducking. I mean, Mike Tomzak's a defensive player. The intention was protection. How does he get called for blocking low? Oh, nifty rule. First and <laughs> 10, San Francisco now from the 20-yard line. And here's Craig, who stopped at the line of scrimmage. Second and ten. Singletary and Perry in on the stop. The rule says after a change of possession, neither team can block low. Well, well certainly one well, doesn't want uh, to block low. Yep. Now, wait a minute. Now, there's a question. Now, th that's a block? Well, what's, what's the alternative for the quarterback to do? Stand there and get knocked into the seats? That's a duck. I mean, he was ducking. No ducking below the knees. <laughs> I mean, oh, well, this is, I know it's a tough game, but I, you're not supposed to just stand there and take it in the chops. Yeah. So he's had three interceptions. Peyton's lost a fumble. He's had a penalty called on him. Five touchdowns this year and 17 interceptions. And on second and 10, Young to run. And he's been proficient doing this as he's taken down at the 13-yard line. In the air tonight, he's two out of nine. Now, let's go back and look at that play again. Now, the interception has already been thrown. Michael Walter, number 99, right here, has the ball. But here's Mike Tomzak. Now here comes a 49er intent on blocking him, and Tomzak really is just looking for a place to hide. I mean, he's just going down, protecting himself. He doesn't, he's got his hands on the ground. I'm a quarterback. That's not my game. I'm just protecting myself. Jeff Fuller is coming in to try to take the guy's head off. He drops to the ground and gets a penalty like that. I, I'm sorry. I, I can't buy that. That, that. that rule needs to be altered. Third and three at the 13-yard line. Young for Clark. Touchdown. If I was Don Meredith, I'd be tempted to sing. <laughs> wow. Dwight Clark, and he better than any 49er, knows what it's like to run along the back line of that end zone. 19, what was it, 81? 81. Championship, NFC against Dallas. Much the same, only Montana was passing. He was rolling out the other way, and this time all the way across the field. Clark working against Jackson. He picked up help from Todd Bell and at the back of the end zone used his height. Big target touchdown. Wershing kicks it through and the 49ers have dominated the first half despite losing Joe Montana. Steve Young isn't completing many passes but the majority are seem to be going for touchdowns and the 49ers flexing their muscles. We've seen that angle before but not often this score. With a flourish, he caught a touchdown pass against Cleveland two weeks ago. Catches one here tonight. And meanwhile, Jim Harbaugh loosens up for Chicago. It's been a dreadful first half for Tomzak with three interceptions, and the rookie out of Michigan is getting loose. Wershing kicks off. From the nine-yard line, it's Gentry. And popped down at the 19 by 
five, Darren Como again. That's three tackles for him. The 49ers have done a pretty bad job this season, generally speaking, covering kicks. But tonight, good work, especially from that man, Como. And Mike Tomczak stays in at quarterback for the Bears. And it is pretty tough to get anything done with those turnovers. Interception, fumble, interception, fumble, and look how they translate the points. That doesn't even reflect the offsides, the illegal movement. It's been a self-destruct tonight for the Bears. First and ten from the 20-yard line. Payton. Now to the 24-yard line, stopped by Jeff Stover. The Bears, though, know what it takes to come from behind. They did it against Tampa Bay earlier this season. And Chicago has been pulling out victory after victory this season. But one big thing tonight is Jim McMahon is not in uniform. He can't rescue him. And they didn't do it at Candlestick Park against the 10 and 2 49ers. 49ers might be playing the best football of any team in the National Football League right now. Second down and six from the 24 yard line. 255 to go in the half. Throws out to the 40-yard line. Caught there by Dennis McKinnon. First down, Bears. Good work on the part of McKinnon. He was covered initially when Tom Zach rolled out under the pressure, and McKinnon kept moving around, jockeying around there until he finally got an open spot, and Tom Zach was able to get in into him. And you can see, good shot there. McKinnon jockeying, giving an angle, finally an angle, and he gets away just in time from Griffin to get the completion. But I, I, I've got to bring something up here. What are the Bears doing? Walking back to the huddle, walking up to the line of scrimmage. There's 2.15 left in this half. They're down by 20 points, and they're in no hurry to run a play. And the clock, as you see, down under 2.10. On I mean, first and 10 from the 40-yard line. Out to the 45, the catch is made there by Neil Anderson, and he's dropped after a pickup of five, and that takes us to the two-minute warning. I mean, coaches are through right now. And NFL Charities grant commitments totaling $125,000 for expanded research into amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, commonly known as Lou Gehrig's disease. Those grants announced tonight. The grants were for $100,000 to the national... Two minutes to play in the first half. Chicago, first and ten, or make it to second down and five from the 45-yard line. They have all three timeouts remaining. 49ers lead 20 to nothing. Second and five. Sanders. First down, and he gets to the 49er 46, where he's tackled by Keena Turner. And now the Bears come up without a huddle. First and ten at the 46-yard line. Again, all of their timeouts left. is stopped with a minute and a half now. Tom Zach throwing in complete second down and ten. Second and ten. Tom Zach caught at the 39 and a football. And the 49ers get it back on Chicago's fifth turnover of the half. Don Griffin comes up with a fumble and Dicker can't believe it. Dennis Gentry spits up the ball. Good news, bad news. He fumbles, but he makes a nice open field tackle after the fumble. And Dennis Gentry turns the ball over, ends up making the play. A good throw by Mike Tomzak, who had some nice protection. Up comes the hit by Jeff Fuller. That strips the ball. And right back in it, Dennis Gentry pulls down Don Griffin. And that is so typical of what the Bears are doing tonight. This is turning into a nightmare for the Bears. Mm, what a half. Five turnovers. 49ers on top 20 to nothing and now San Francisco with all of its timeouts remaining from the 42 yard line 122 left in the half and they'll look for more as Young goes to the air caught at the 48 and that's fumbled and the Bears have it at the 45 yard line Jerry Rice and instantly I think back to last night we're standing here talking to Bill Walsh about Jerry Rice and I said coach is this guy the perfect receiver and what did he say he said if he has one fault 
he often mishandles the ball after the reception. Remember the playoff game last year in New York where he drops the ball in the open field when he's running with it. Here he has it, just doesn't cleanly put it away. Dent strips it, and Singletary's there, but it's covered by Todd Bell. Bears get it back, still have their timeouts, they have 115. I bet Walsh will still let him start the second half, though. Yeah, I get that feeling. <laughs> First down at the 46, Tom Zack from the shotgun. Swings it out to Anderson. He got by McKayer, and then is run out of bounds to stop the clock near the 45-yard line with 107 to play in the half. Good thinking Anderson down the sidelines. Did not try to break it back to the middle end. He probably could have gotten a lot more out of it. 49ers with a touchdown and a field goal in the first quarter. Touchdown and a field goal in the second quarter. The 49er lock in. Second and one from the shotgun. And open but overthrown is Dennis Gentry. Wide open is Dennis Gentry. You'll never want anything more wide open in the prevent defense. 49ers with six defensive backs in. He splits the gap wide open. Tom Zach, no one in his face. He has plenty of protection and just overthrows the football. 49ers just falling back into that deep zone and right in that intermediate range was Gentry and Mike Tom Zach just had a little too much arm. Third down at the 44-yard line. And they need the first down, so they give it to the money man, Peyton, and he gets it at the 35-yard line. They had to think about the first down there, third and inches, and they have all their timeouts left, so they still have plenty of time with 52 seconds. And today, just keeps rolling on. First and 10. Bears from the shotgun, 35-yard line. Pump fake. Going deep, too deep. And slipping down is Willie Gall. Once he got out on that rubberized surface, along with Tim McHire, the two went down as if they were on a skating rink. Second down. That's a ball that Mike Tomzak, A, threw into double coverage, and B, threw it out of the end of the stadium where Willie Gall really has no chance of coming down with it, but... Really pretty Tim McKayer going up, timing his leap, and getting a hand on the football. It's Mike Tomzak at times gives you the impression that he makes up his mind at the snap of the football where he's going to throw the football, Frank, and come you know what in high water, he delivers it. The way the 49ers play this with their six defensive backs, about the only place you can be sure of getting an open man is something like he had Gentry open a while ago, something down the middle, and that's going to use time. They'll give you that one. On second and ten. Zach scrambling away and throws back over the middle, intercepted. There's a flag down. Ronnie Locke with the interception brings it back to the 45. Flag thrown down at the 32 just as Lott was making the interception. Mike might have a word or two at the half. Maybe. Ineligible receiver offense, number 63, downfield. Finley is declined. First down, San Francisco. Again, it's a situation where Mike Tomczak tries to make something happen. He rolls out of the pocket from the rush, but throwing off balance, just gets the ball tipped in front. One of the 49ers gets his hand on the ball. Jeff Fuller and Ronnie Lott makes the pick. The great one's always around the football. Ronnie Lott, the Travelers' Man of the Year for the 49ers. For his efforts off the field as well as on, and we'll, of course, pick up the NFL's Travelers Man of the Year at the Super Bowl. Rathman takes it out to the 46 as the Niners appear to be content as a flag now goes down. San Francisco ready to run out the clock and go in up 20 to nothing, and a marker is down. Bears this season had scored 188 points in the first half. Blank tonight. It's an average of 16 her first half this year. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense, number 87, four under the head, 15 yards. Dwight Clark. Not often you get a wide receiver flag for an unsportsmanlike penalty. A forearm to the head. 
Dwight. That's Dwight, Dwight Clark, the tall, slim, angular one. <laughs> Soon to be known as the T.J. Tuckers of the West. Right, the restaurateur just opened up a, a new restaurant. Redwood Shores, about a half hour south of here. Here it is. If on the outside, he's working with Festy Jackson, and not designed to put you away, though, is it? I don't think it cracked his plastic helmet. First and 25, and Young will go down to one knee, and unless the Bears stop it, that's going to be the end. Look out, Plaster, and his team on its way to an 11th victory in 13. See you in fact, I can't think of the last time the Bears looked that dastardly through 30 minutes of football. They trailed 20 to nothing. Giants 17 to nothing, and the Giants won the game. That was last year. Kickoff taken to the 14-yard line by Thomas Sanders, and he brings it back out to the 29-yard line. And this ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Bud Light, proud sponsor of the 1988 U.S. Olympic team by Dodge Cars and Trucks. For performance on road and off, it's got to be a Dodge. And by Northwest Airlines, the airline to the quarterbacking. We miscalled one pass in the first half. Might have been wishful thinking on the part of some Bear fans. But if you want Harbaugh, here he is. At the 30-yard line, first and 10. The rookie out of Michigan. The number one draft choice goes right to the air. And throws a screen to Anderson. Some nifty running. He's upended as he nears the first down marker at the 40 yard line. Stopped there by Tim McKayer. That's what you want to do, though, when you bring in a youngster. You let him get something that has high percentage for completion, and you go with the screen pass, something out of the backfield to a back. But Harbaugh has not played well. He was actually in one game earlier this year, but just running out the clock. Great record at Michigan, over 2,500 yards passing as a senior. Ten touchdowns. As you kind of anticipate, too, that the 49ers would probably do a lot of blitzing on him, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can take that to the bank. First and ten from the 40-yard line. He throws over the middle, and it's caught at the 46 by the tight end, Emery Moorhead. The numbers for the first half, and the big figure, of course, will be Chicago turnovers. And that number just sticks out. Six, if by far and away, a season high for the Bears. Six turnovers. Look at the total yards. Negligible, but those six turnovers just translate right to the scoreboard. 20 to nothing. 57 rushing yards, and this from a team that's led the league for four straight years in rushing. They could do nothing on the ground, and they tried. Second and four. Bears from the 46. Harbaugh. No flags. And the pass thrown into traffic as the pressure was put on by Charles Haley, who came flying through. For late tuners in now, Joe Montana injured in the first half, and here's the way it happened. It was a play-action play. Watch Joe fake to Roger Craig, hook his right foot on Roger's foot, then throw out his left leg to catch himself, pulls the hamstring, twists the knee, and his status, his future with the 49ers, right now up and down. The hamstring injury, we're being told, is more serious than the knee twist. Third down and four, and it's Peyton who gets stopped after a gain of one. So Walter on a sweep is stopped by Jeff Stover. And the Bears will have to kick it. They are still working on Montana's hamstring. When we say it's more serious, we, we have to qualify it and put it in perspective. The possibility still exists. They are telling us that Montana could play next week as we have a 49er down here. Which when you work on a hamstring, what you're really talking about, you're putting ice on it. Walking it was a good illustration. He took the blow on the side of his knee and was able to get that right foot up off of the turf before his cleats dug in and held it. But obviously in pain, Keena Turner coming off the field but punt tonight Wagner to kick it and a fair catch is made at the eight yard line by Dana McLemore from there will the 49ers take possession of the ball for the first time in the second half 1242 to go in the third period 20 to nothing San Fran his team is on top 20 to nothing but it's not been a great night for him he's lost Montana at least for the rest of the night he has to wonder about Keena Turner now. And his team has it 
offensively for the first time here in the second half from the eight yard line with Steve Young, the quarterback. Taking to Craig and then lofting one and nearly picked off. Incomplete, a dangerous pass. Mike Richardson was there on the pass intended for the backup tight end, Brent Jones. Ooh, and what are those? You and I looked at each other because there's a way for Chicago to get right back in this ball game if Mike Richardson somehow comes up and makes that play and boy at first it looked to me like that's a that, that's a ball that maybe he could have gotten to boy it's just it, what a what an awkward night for the Bears and do they need something like that second and ten from the eight yard line Gray nearly gets taken down by the helmet by Otis Wilson and Otis Otis Wilson looked like he hurt his hand or arm or something I think he's still down on the ground Otis Wilson came in and made the initial hit in the backfield and slow to get up. He's just back off injured reserve with a knee problem. Nobody blocks Otis Wilson. Here he comes, number 55. Now watch his hit on Craig. Hit the right forearm right on Craig's helmet, and you see Otis going right to the ground, clutching that arm. Hit that unprotected part of the forearm on his helmet, and off goes Otis Wilson. And Al Harris replaces him as he has over the past four weeks with Wilson on injured reserve. Third down, 10. Al Harris, number 90. Outside back. Third and 10 from the eight. That's Brett Jones in motion. Nearly picked off by Dave Dewerson. Young is now four of 13, so his numbers are very poor, but two touchdown passes. I'm saying he is throwing some very dangerous shots out there. This one also could have been picked off by Dewerson. Maybe not for the touchdown that Richardson could have had on the one before, but that's twice now. Deep in his own territory, the Young has thrown poor passes, passes that could have been turned into a pair of touchdowns. Max Runniger to punt out of his end zone. And it bounces into Chicago territory and rolls dead at the 44-yard line. 48-yard kick by Runniger. Bears get it back with 11.52 remaining in the third. A reminder. Series was it for the Bears defensively. Here's Mike Richardson. Watch the play that he has on Steve Young. Now he hesitates coming back to get this pass. It's tipped. Watch this. Right there, you have to think that Mike Richardson has a touchdown. All right. Later, here's Dave Dewerson. Watch him make a play for the football. Now, if Dave Dewerson is a wide receiver, you've got to say he's got to catch this ball. He's got it right in his arm. Two interceptions for the Bears on one series. They don't come up with either one of them. Instead, they start from the 44-yard line, and it's a screen to Peyton, who cuts it back to the inside across the 50 to the 49 or 48 yard line and that'll make it second down at about two and Peyton's slow and rising second and two Neil Anderson and Thomas Sanders are the running backs from the 48 yard line and Sanders exploits the hole picks up the first down takes it down to the 39 yard line and the Way was led by Tom Thayer, and there are two markers down. And while we were in commercial, they carted Keena Turner back to the locker room with a sprained right knee. And this will negate, negate the run by Sanders. Illegal track back. Offense number 84. 15-yard penalty, replayed it down. Ron Morris, the rookie wide receiver. And he'd like to be in another zip code right now. He'd like to be confined to an airplane with Mike Ditka going home tonight. In Un coach. Unfortunately, this entire team is going to be confined with Mike Ditka on a plane on the way back to Chicago. Second and 17 from the 37. up at the 32 yard line and driven to the turf by Charles Haley. 
He's the best of the pass rushes for the 49ers. They move him all over. What a surprise he was when they picked him in the fourth round a year ago. Let's take a look at the pass rush number 94, bottom of your screen. And out comes Blair, who has replaced Colbert earlier in the game to try to put the block on Haley, and Harbo didn't help a whole lot, stepped right back into it. A lot of times that offensive tackle gets blamed for a lot of things Danny shouldn't get blamed for. Well, he gave Haley just too much of the upfield rush, and Harbaugh, when he went past, really thought he was out of the play, and I don't see where he could have done a whole lot else. Third and 23, wide open is Anderson, but he has no blocking, and he's tackled at the 37-yard line. And that'll mean fourth and long, and in comes Wagner on the punting unit. With 10 minutes to play, in the third quarter. Candlestick Park, where the 49ers will play out the season. And we mentioned at the top, they may not have to leave California. The rest of the regular season at home, and if they get the home field advantage for the playoffs, they'll never have to leave the state. At the 18-yard line, McLemore. To the 40. Out in front, Dana McLemore. Inside the 20. Touchdown. No flags. Now two go down, but after the play. He's done it before, playing with a dislocated thumb on his hand. Deals the football, and for the Bears, the problems are just compounding themselves. And Jeff Fuller. The starting strong, the starting safety got the last block that sprung McLemore. Jeff Fuller came in and made the hit at midfield, and Dana McLemore cutting to the sidelines goes the distance. We had personal foul, unnecessary roughness on number 20, Chicago. Kicking, we will penalize on the kickoff. Thomas Sanders, that was after McLemore had gotten in to the end zone. Take a good look at the block coming from the left of your screen. That's Jeff Fuller on Wagner, the punter, and that'll catch your attention. I think Wagner could go have a conversation with Walter Payton and Dana McLemore. Makes the most of it, 83 yards. A backbreaker? I don't know. That might have happened a while ago, but sure put an ache on it if it isn't breaking it. Ray Wershing, Rumminger takes the high snap and gets it down. They got a backup quarterback, they got a backup holder. Punch being run back for touchdowns, interceptions, and fumble recoveries, and they're turning it into a round. 27 to nothing. Jeff Fuller playing on special teams, even though a starter makes the hit on Brian Wagner and sends him to La La Land. And McLemore to the end zone. There's a man doing a great job this season, not only at strong safety, but on special teams as well. Jeff Fuller picked in the fifth round in 84, taking Carlton Williamson's spot in the secondary. Hey, the kid can spell. You got it right, Dan. I don't know if my son would be flattered or not. <laughs> no, that is not my son, but I, at least he spelled the name right. Seven. The scratch. And he's part of the biggest crowd in 49er history. 63,509 at Candlestick Park. And they've had a lot to cheer about. 27 0. And Ray Wershing, the beneficiary of kicking off from midfield because of the penalty assessed after the touchdown run back by McLemore, puts it through the end zone. I wonder what you tell him now, Dan. Eddie Hughes, the offensive coordinator. Former teammate of mine with his head in there. Ditka doing all the talking, however. Well, Eddie's I, doing a lot of listening. Trailed on the sidelines. And Bill Walsh, I, you know he's been around long enough to know that this is not representative of the talents of these two teams. But like all coaches, you'll take it when it happens to roll your way. The Bears have not suffered a beating like this since 1984. First and 10 at the 20 yard line. The Michigan rookie Harbaugh flag 
Yeah, they're going to get to a player. The left tackle for holding on Dwayne Board, and Blair is really having a tough go at left tackle. He got the flag from the umpire. He got it from the line judge. And... <laughs> you know, that quarterback dances out of that pocket, though. You tend to do that. I mean, the pressure is off you. You tend to grab. You tend to hold. That's exactly what happened. Holding. Offense, number 68. 10-yard penalty. Repeat the down. First down. And they also know you have to pass. You're in a tough position. Blair, who played last week for Culver. Let's watch again. Number 68 going against Dwayne Board. And there's the rip underneath. See the left arm of Dwayne Board and unfortunately the left arm of Paul Blair is right across the face of Dwayne Board. And he's Paul Blair is just really having a nightmare night at left back. Big shoes to fill. Jim Culver. First and 20. Catch is made by Emery Moorhead and brought down inbounds at the 18-yard line, and another marker is down, and so's a helmet. If that helmet got ripped off, we can only assume Michael Carter, the nose guard, working inside against Jay Hilgenberg. Michael, look at this. <laughs> Whoa! And Jay removes Michael's helmet. Michael Carter is uh, Son's helmet, and this will be a hole. Use of the hands. Offense, number 63, mm -hmm. hands with a face mask. Helmet extraction. A lot That's of what Jay uh, is saying now. I, I did it after he did it to me. There was a, quite an exchange there. Now he's yeah. chatting with Michael Carter across the line of scrimmage. Well, he said, that's exactly what he's saying. He's saying Carter hit me first. That's a, a weak argument in this stage of the game. Falling on deaf ears. First and 25 from the five. 8.25 to play third quarter. Anderson. Ooh. Oh, crunched at the 16-yard <laughs> line. Jeff Fuller again. Yep. Boy, does he hit. Fuller is almost like the case of Gary Fensick with the Bears. He's just so good, you have to get him in there, and that's exactly what Bill Walsh decided he had to do. He set Carlton Williamson down, brought Fuller in, and he has just turned into one of the fine, strong safeties. Now watch as Sanders tries to break it back against the grain. That's Fuller. And also Roberts. Larry Roberts, number 91, got in there as well. You so, know, Fuller's 216 pounds. He used to play linebacker in the nickel. That's a heck of a big, strong safety. So much for 49er finesse. Second and 14, underthrown, tip nearly intercepted. Todd Shell almost had another one. Off the hands of Emory Moorhead. Oh, and Mike uh -oh. wants to talk with him right now. Mm. Jim Harbaugh to calm down. I, on the you think he other said, side of things, I'm under complete control at all times. <laughs> you think he might have said to Mike, no, this is only a game, coach. <laughs> hey, Mike Ditka, you have to love him. I mean, what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. Everyone's going to be treated exactly the same. You saw Jim Harbaugh. He's not offended at being yelled at by his coach. Keep in mind, this guy played for Bo Schembechler at Michigan. That's nothing new, having a coach right in your face. Third and 14. Anderson. Out to the 28-yard line. Ronnie Lott comes up to make the tackle. Interesting call, though, way down. 27 to nothing, deep in your own territory. Rookie quarterback in there. Even though you've chewed him out, you protect him a little bit. You don't let him put it up in the air where he's going to get it picked off and maybe totally humiliate himself. And it was Dick who made the call, even though he's upset with the play before. It was the right call. You don't want to destroy a young man before he has a chance to develop. Frank, I couldn't agree with you more. Fourth and two at the 28-yard line. 49ers to set up a return. Weak kick by Wagner. And it takes a 49er bounce, and the Bears have to down it at the 47-yard line. And there is Joe Montana. So on a night when everything else is going swimmingly and perfectly for the 49ers, they still have to live with that sight. And he, the crowd now senses it, and the hand is for Joe. Getting an ovation, interesting, too, and it is a good sign. Dan, they do not have that leg in any kind of a split. There's no board to keep it extended. That would be a pretty good sign. And the word we had was the knee was not 
so much the problem as was the hamstring pull. If we can get a shot of the side of the crutch, he's got one of those stimulators actually attached to the crutch, and they're already giving him muscle stimulation. It's going to be tough to do in a crowd like that, but there's a mechanical stimulator attached to his crutch. Here's Craig, who gets tripped up before he can get out of the backfield by Ron Rivera, who's taking Otis Wilson's spot at outside linebacker. Kind of hard. You see it right there, the box on the left crutch? This is one of the ways the National Football League has really come a long way in their ability to aggressively treat an injury right off the bat. That's going down his pants leg and actually providing some electrical stimulation, working that hamstring muscle already. And the crowd chanting, Joe, 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 on second and 11 from the 46-yard line. Young, wide open is Clark, makes the catch at the 30, out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Mike Richardson gets credit for the tackle. Clark was wide open. What a move. Dwight Clark put on Richardson. Bottom of your screen, Clark. Now watch the drive he makes to the inside. Richardson bought it all the way, got totally turned around. Clark was wide open, and Young was right on target with it. You tell me why this guy should think about quitting. That was a that was quite a move by Dwight Clark, who says this is it. But, He's hedged uh, a little, though, recently, hasn't he? I think if I'm Bill Walsh, I've got to do one of my better salesmanship jobs keeping this guy active. He might, but keep in mind, too, he's coming off multiple knee surgery during the offseason, which precipitated his talking about retirement to begin with from the 25-yard line on first and 10. Young out of bounds at the 18-yard line. Look at Mike Singletary talking to Steve Young. I think that's a little sign, a little warning. It says, hey, uh, if you're going to keep coming out of the pocket, one of us is going to take a shot. Look at that hand, that left hand. He had 15 stitches put in the second finger of that left hand a week ago. I think he missed two series while they sewed it up and got right back into the lineup and playing again tonight. And hey, when you want to talk about the spirit and the soul of this defense, you're looking at it right there, number 50. Second and one at the 16. This is Rashman fighting his way forward for a first down. And guess who makes the tackle on that play? How about Mike Singletary? I think he reads this about as well as a middle linebacker could do it. There's Mike to the lower right of your screen, number 50. Reads the handoff to Rathman right off the bat, slices through, in on the play, and gets the tackle. That's that's what you ask the middle linebacker to do. Make the right read, make it decisively, get in, get low, get under the runner's shoulder pads and put into the ground. San Francisco at the Chicago 15, 5-15 to play third quarter, 27 to nothing, 49ers. First and 10. Craig. Dropped for a loss, taken down by Ron Rivera. Right. You'd have to go back to 84. The last time the Bears were what you could call slaughtered would be in September of 84 when the Seahawks beat them in Seattle 38 to 9. And there is McMahon and Ditka hopeful that McMahon can come back next week. There it is, September 23rd of 84, 38 to 9 at the Kingdom. Last time the Bears were shut out, 1982 by the Saints. 10 nothing. Second and 11. Young for Rice. Touchdown. Oh, uh, you can't do that. <laughs> he can. <laughs> he is remarkable. His second touchdown tonight, 17th of the year. One away from the NFL record for a single season. And I think that was a phenomenal catch. Well, it was a superb throw by Steve Young and Vesty Jackson, the cornerback to that side, locked up in single coverage. The Bears came with the blitz then. He's got to think now, i got to keep both feet inbounds. No way you can take your eye off that ball. Fingertips. Yeah, that's beautiful. Jerry Rice, he's doing everything that Bill Walsh had hoped that Ronaldo Nehemiah could do years ago when he signed Nehemiah. What a pair when they came up three years ago. Altoon of the Jets. They were 1-2 by some scout combine. Some had them 
Rice has the second best. Some had Toon the best. But what he does to that ball control short passing attack makes you think about the possibility of a touchdown on every play. Jerry Rice has caught two tonight. Wershing boots it through. 4.58 to go on the third. 34 to nothing if you can believe it. parties with only Bud Light. He knows everything else is just a light. Jerry Rice has caught a touchdown pass in 11 consecutive games. 17 touchdown receptions this season. Only man in the history of the NFL to catch 15 or more touchdown passes in two different years. One shy now of Mark Clayton's all-time NFL mark, and he's got two games to go against Atlanta and the Rams. There he is. He's made it 34 to nothing, and Wershing kicks it down to the one-yard line, taken there by Thomas Sanders. And he brings it back out to the 28-yard line. This oh, that's, that's real appetizing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a mistake there. You talk about Elvis Patterson being called toast. <laughs> you stuffed the wrong thing in your mouth, and that's a real treat. Barbot dumps it off to Anderson, and he's ridden out of bounds at just about the line of scrimmage by Todd Shell. Somebody would have told us three hours ago we'd be watching what we're watching. We would no way we would have believed this in the world. Yeah, with Montana out as well. In fact, you really have got to start totally believing in the 49ers. A couple of weeks ago, it was Cleveland came in here. As we look at Joe Montana, they had the number one defense in the league when they arrived here a couple of weeks ago. 455 yards later in a 38-24 win, Cleveland had been destroyed just like the Bears are being destroyed tonight. Second down and ten. Dropped by Fonhorst. Funny thing about the 49ers, when this season began, it began on a real low note. They were beaten at Pittsburgh 30 to 17. And then you'll recall they would have lost to Cincinnati in that bizarre finish where the Bengals couldn't run the clock out. The Niners got it back, and Rice caught the pass for the touchdown at the end of the game to make them one and one instead of 0 and 2. Then they won three during the strike, and away they went. And you would have to say, guys, that they're peaking at the right time of year. Boy, are they ever. Third and four from the shotgun. Gentry makes the catch, fights his way for what he hopes would be a first down, but appears to have been stopped just shy by McKayer. Glad they threw the ball. I thought both teams were trying to run the clock out. Clock still running with 3.38 to play third period. Harbaugh. Dan mentioned before. Western Michigan, and I was talking to Jimmy down on the field before the game, and we were swapping some Bo Schembechler stories, and he said, you know, I'm going to play tonight. I said, well, has Mike Dicka told you you're going to play? He said, no, I just have a feeling I'm going to get in the ball game. Some kind of feeling. I I don't know that this is exactly what he had in mind. Now they're going for it, of course, on fourth and one. And Peyton appears to have been stopped shy. Well, this is talk about in your face. And it's Carlton Williamson who now backs up Jeff Fuller at strong safety. 49ers are playing in your face football. And they are beating the Bears soft. They hold him on downs and get it back at the 36. Mm. Oof. Boy, you'll need rotator cuff surgery after that move. Well, just imagine what's going on in his mind. Talking to Mike this morning, he challenged his football team to play well against a good team. He said, don't tell me how you beat up on the weak guys. How do you play against a good football team? I want to see tonight, and I, I don't think he's enjoying what he's saying. At the 36-yard line, he's not believing what he's saying. 
They go to Joe Cribbs, who comes in the game. And Cribbs carries it to the 35-yard line. Joe Cribbs shaken up earlier in the season, and that precipitated the move whereby the 49ers moved Roger Craig to halfback and enabled Tom Rathman to come in as the fullback. And it's been a very potent combination. So Cribbs now in a backup role. Second and nine at the 35. 34 nothing San Francisco. Cribs on a reverse to Rice. Inside the 30, out of bounds at the 24. And Steve Young, the quarterback, threw a block, and I believe he's injured. Steve Young came around to make a block on that play, and boy, he's working on his left arm, which is, of course, his throwing arm. He says he'll stay in there. Harry Sidney, he's going to take a timeout, though, to try to regroup. Harry Sidney. Young all the way through this play. Okay, there goes the handoff. Now he's going to block. Right back on Ron. Well, no, he's going to work his way upfield. But watch the left arm get in there. And it's tough to tell by that angle exactly how he hooks it as he tries to block on Danny Hampton. But his block on Hampton. Well, when he goes to the ground, he falls on it. He looked like he fell on his left elbow. And with the ball at the 23 yard line after taking a timeout. 2.09 to play third quarter. And again, the 49ers minus Montana, and then there's Young, and then after that, you go down to Sydney as the backup quarterback. But for the moment, Young stays in. Cribs stop for no gain. Second and ten. If we would ever get to Harry Sydney being in the ball game, I don't know that he would necessarily feel a great deal of pressure. I'm <laughs> fairly confident any one of the three of us could go in and wrap this baby up for the 49ers. You think Harry Sidney's not thinking about it though? <laughs> hey, might be. If I'm Harry Sidney, I wouldn't wish anything disastrous to happen to Steve Young, but let's it'd be a pretty good story, him oh, getting a couple it. snaps. Second and ten at the 23. And they send Sidney in motion. Brent moving to the outside and to the 18-yard line as the clock ticks down in the third quarter. Joe Cribbs, a couple of thousand yard rushing seasons a few years ago with Buffalo. And now mentioned earlier, kind of got lost in the shuffle when Tom Rathman came on and they moved Craig to the tailback, Rathman to the fullback. And you wonder what happens to Chicago psychologically after this game. I mean, the uplifting win last week over the Vikings, you think this is really going to propel them on some kind of a roll? Well, that win over the Vikings. That is long gone after tonight. This is a crushing blow to the Chicago Bears. I mean, you got to wonder how quickly they're going to be able to suck it up. On third and five, it's Jerry Rice who makes the catch and gets the first down at the 11-yard line. You know about the arm now. Steve Young read the blitz, knew he'd get the single coverage over on Rice, timed it out absolutely perfectly, gets the first down. 49ers going with a lot of the backups here, not Rice, of course, but Steve Wallace is spelling Paris at tackle. Fred Quillen is in there at center. John Taylor, wide receiver, and the backup running backs, Harry Sidney and Joe Cribbs. There's Young, under 50%, but three touchdowns on seven completions. First and ten. Sidney. Coming up from the secondary is Todd Bell for the tackle, number 25. Five 49ers won't have to run one before the clock expires. And we'll be back to Candlestick Park after this word about an upcoming show on ABC and a word from your local station. Roberts, you got a couple arrows and a big R there. <laughs> Look at that. Joe Montana ought to put those arrows on his head, pointing the other direction, and the R would stand for Rice. Jerry Rice. Throw that ball downfield anywhere in the direction of number 80. Again, if you're good. wondering why Montana is standing there in street clothes early in the ball game in the first quarter, of injured hamstring, twisted knee, and he's out for the rest of the evening. 
And still it's 34 nothing San Francisco as we start the fourth quarter and the Niners have it second down and 11 just outside the 11. And Young looking for more throwing to the one where Rice makes the catch tackled by Dewerson. They have to get to the half yard line for a first down and Tobin can't believe what's happened to his defense tonight. Again, it's down to the two. Well, he's probably wondering what the 49ers are doing with Jerry Rice still in the ball game. Everybody's taking a shot at him. You saw Mike Singletary take a, a good stroke at his midsection. Dave Dorson comes in, and that's good concentration on the football and gives Steve Young credit. That's a nice throw. Looked like he was on a freeway there for a moment, bouncing off bears, and you kind of wonder yourself why they are not working more on the clock. Why are they going to Rice over the middle particularly? Third down. They can get a first down without the touchdown. They go for it all. It's that's Rice for the want. hat trick. And he ties Clayton's record. They want that record. 18 touchdown catches this season. He beats Reggie Phillips, and he has two games to put his name into the record book all by himself. And a full quarter. And that's 10 touchdowns in the last four games for Jerry Rice. I think by the time this game is over, there will be no one in the Bears secondary who's going to leave unscathed. This time it's Reggie Phillips, who's never even in the play. Jerry Rice just making it look oh so easy. And we saw Bo Jackson in that long run against Seattle, and our comment was it looks like a man out there playing with boys. That's exactly what Jerry Rice is making the Chicago Bears look like tonight. A bunch of little kids. San Francisco on top, 41 to nothing. That's not an audio typo. A real shocker, 41 to nothing San Francisco, and Chicago can only hope that they get another crack at the 49ers. It would come on the 17th of January here. Gentry takes it back to the 31-yard line. And raised the point in the commercial of one that I had raised a moment ago, too. Uh, you wonder about the 49ers on top, blowing the way the Bears, continuing to throw the football, and you only have to think that this man, Bill Waltz, is very aware that Jerry Rice was within reach of that record and Mark Clayton, which he is now tied, and that is 18 touchdown passes within a season. Yeah, but you talk about taking no prisoners. Mm -hmm. I mean, up 34 to nothing. It won't be forgotten. At the beginning of the fourth quarter and throwing consecutive passes, in an attempt to to score that's uh, I'm not saying you play it soft but it's a uh, I guess this is a game played by big boys and Bill Walsh is getting that point across to Mike Ditka very well first and ten from the thirty two flag is down there was a false start oh, and Willie Galt runs it out of bounds Willie Galt broke the snap White. Almost, I'll tell you who started out early was Jim Harbaugh. I think the quarterback forgot the snap count and pulled out a little early. Harbaugh definitely gave it a little flinch on the inside. Illegal motion. We talk about the feelings between the, between the two teams. I don't know whether hard feelings or not, but the whole illegal motion. Offense number 87, five-yard penalty, repeat the down, first down. Oh, William Perry turning into a running back and a blocking back began here when Bill Walsh used Guy McIntyre in the backfield to lead Wendell Tyler. That was back in 1984, and then Bill Walsh had to watch it the next year in Chicago in 1985. But I think they can overdo bad blood between Walsh and Dicker. There's a tremendous amount of mutual respect and admiration there. Anderson, and even though they are two very disparate gentlemen, at least outwardly, there's a, a I think there's a, a more of a common bond between Walsh and Ditka than most people would surmise. I, I would agree with you. In fact, Mike told me uh, that he had spoken to Bill Walsh a couple times this week about some different subjects. So. Uh, I, I think that's a good point. I mean, it's bad blood. Was Bill Walsh doing that to insult Mike Ditka? No, I, no uh, way. No. Still, if they meet again, will that be fodder for the locker room wall? Absolutely. Players look for any angle they can get. Second and 17 from the 26 yard line. Harbaugh. 
to the 30-yard line. And one of the longest four-yard runs in the history of the NFL. What a trip he took. He could have turned it out, out of bounds, and perhaps even picked up a little more. He chose to break it back to the middle. Tough spot to put a youngster in, breaking in, no matter what kind of a record he had at Michigan, talking about Harbaugh. Way down. Bring him in against the team that is as hot as the 49ers. Indians trying to protect him out there. Third and 12. Drops the snap. Down he goes and throws from his backside. Boy. Dropped by Anderson. And if one play sums up Chicago's fortunes tonight, this baby was it. I think we could let this one roll without any commentary at all, Al. I think you're exactly right. This one play personifies December the 14th, 1987 for the Bears. Hmm. Boy, that was really good look. <laughs> Put a little music under it. A little Christmas Carol or something. Bad snap as well. Wobbly kick. McLemore has to back up. And then he has to let it bounce. And touch at the 20-yard line. 12-04 left in the fourth. 41 to nothing, 49ers. This is one streak that will come to an end. The Bears have been the comeback kids this year. Four times they've trailed after the third quarter. They won all of those games. And as you can see, the rest of the teams in the league have won about one in five trailing after three. But that streak will summarily come to an end tonight. Cribs from the 20. For a gain of about three with 11 minutes and 55 seconds to play 41 to nothing 49ers and as we said before the next two games at home and if they get the home field advantage for the playoffs they'd be here and then down to San Diego on the 31st of January well, the Bears got the division all locked up but they have Seattle that coming into Chicago this Sunday and then they go out and play the Raiders the Raiders even though they Dropped one yesterday. They have shown, we saw them a couple of weeks ago against Seattle. They can do the football and play really good football on a given night. When Bo Jackson is healthy, which he wasn't yesterday, he was hurt after three carries. Second and seven. Grim gets out near the 30 yard line, tackled by Wilbur Marshall. <laughs> extra, extra. Home at 11, huh? Well. <laughs> Montana won out early, but you'd never know it. There will be a lot of film at 11. San Francisco is so up for this game. And who would have thunk it? And there is Joe on the sidelines. Which again, if you didn't see early on, Joe hyperextended his left knee, pulled a hamstring at the same time, and is on crutches on the sidelines. Third and inches. They have to get the ball to the 30 yard line. pick up the first down as he takes it out to the 34 yard line and he's tackled by Singletary. 49ers trying to win or get to the Super Bowl for the third time in the 1980s. Bill Walsh took over in 79. Ed DeBartolo came in. They stumbled through the 70s and they had the change of ownership. It took a while to get things going but once they got it going off they went. Was just one little stumble along the way, the strike season of 82 when they were three and six. Coming off a Super Bowl victory, Super Bowl 16 win over Cincinnati. Then the dominating year in 84 when they lost only once and blew Miami out in the Super Bowl. Spriggs tackled by Rivera. I think we talked about earlier, too, we talked so much about their offense, and you have to when you consider the year Montana's had, along with Rice, but they have played superb defense this year. Ranked fifth in overall in the National Football League, fourth against the pass, seventh against the rush. Even though they've only had 28 sacks, they have still got a lot of pressure. Their sacks actually represent half of what the Bears had into tonight. Just that this game raises so many questions for both sides. How seriously is Joe Montana injured? 
When will he be able to come back and take over control of this team? How effective will he be when he comes back? Will his mobility be restricted? Layoff time isn't very far away. Second and 11. And incomplete on a pass intended for John Frank. Third and 11. For the Bears, as we look at Huey Lewis there on the right of your screen talking to Ronnie Lott. And great story before the game. We're down on the sidelines <laughs> talking to Huey. And he was really moaning the fact that uh, while he sings the national anthem here at Candlestick Park before 49ers games, they have lost the last five times that he has sung the anthem. And tonight he said, you know, some business. You're only as good as your last anthem. <laughs> yeah. At least he broke his string tonight. Who shattered it tonight? Yeah. Third and 11 from the 32. Sydney. And some shoving going on at the 37 yard line. You know, guys, we're talking about the questions. That seems to be about the only question for the 49ers. Montana on the other side, tons of them. Jim McMahon's health. When's he going to be back? Although Mike Dick has sounded optimistic, Al, that maybe even next week. I, I wonder what this does, though, collectively, because in no way could the Bears ever figure they could be beaten like this. No, but if you're challenged by your head coach, how well can you play against a good football team? Well, if I'm challenged like that, and my response is trailing 41-0 in the fourth, I've got to have some serious questions inside. Well, how good a football team is this Chicago Bears squad? That's what I'm saying. Runniger's kick is fielded at the 18-yard line. Dennis McKinnon buried at the 14-yard line. 44-yard kick and minus four on the run back. Jerry Rice tying the record of Mark Clayton of the Miami Dolphins. Three touchdowns tonight to bring him to 18 for the year. That's the first one. He came in motion coming across the field. Durison tried to stay with him. He didn't do it. Here he works his magic once again as Jackson wasn't quite there. And here it was just a short while ago, a little timing pattern and into the end zone once again. Three touchdowns tonight for Jerry Rice, 18 for the season. Tying Mark Clayton's record as Harbaugh gets bumped down by Milt McCall and Joe Montana will head on back with this one well in hand. And his man Jerry Rice catching three. Frank talking about that mark. What's even more amazing is that this is only the 10th game in which Rice has played this season. It truly really is. And Mark Clayton doing that over the course of a 16 game season. He only played in 15 of the 16 games. Big difference. I wonder what Jerry Rice would do if there were five more games other than just two more. He didn't play in the three strike games and then you had the cancel week as well. So this should be his 14th game instead of his 10th. the first down at the 25 yard line as the clock continues to run seven minutes 20 seconds remaining in the game there's that other record for rice he has now caught at least one touchdown in 11 consecutive games and that pulls him into a tie with Elroy Hirsch and Buddy Dial and he gets to face the Atlanta Falcons in an attempt to break that mark next week Think of it is, we're putting the 49ers in the Super Bowl by the way they're playing with this win tonight. We got to keep in mind they're only staying one game ahead of the New Orleans Saints. And you saw Rice talking to another pretty good receiver of the past, Freddie Solomon. That's caught by Suey, who started the game at fullback. Ditka telling us earlier today that he anticipated Matt playing more tonight, but he's. Played only sparingly again. You know, it's interesting. You saw, saw that shot of Freddie Solomon with Jerry Rice. It was Freddie Solomon last year, and he knew, there he is, Freddie Solomon on the right. He knew that this was the man who was going to take his spot and could well take his spot. And Rice has talked about it. I've seen him on several interviews, and he talks about how it was Dwight Clark who helped him so much, and this man, Freddie Solomon. And he was one of the reasons that Freddie Solomon went into his retirement. Just couldn't get it back. 
Doug Mikolas, the backup to Michael Carter. And no Coachman, defense number 97, five yard penalty, still first down. Well, believe it or not, next Monday, it's alive or dead, we'll be there. <laughs> Rams Cowboys. More one than the other. Yeah. <laughs> Cap Bozo, the tight end, makes the catch and takes a swipe. Oh, Cap took a little swing at Michael Walter, I think. Didn't appreciate his treatment going out of bounds and took a good swing at Mike Walter and came up about a yard short. Cap Bozo pushed out of bounds and lashes <laughs> out. And I, again, typical of the Bears evening. Not even close. Mm, and I don't think he went to hit him anyway. You don't think he wanted to? No, I don't think he did. <laughs> you don't think he did? No, I don't. What do you think? It was a nervous reaction? <laughs> Just a nervous little twitch. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Wonder, he's doing it in front of Ditka. Let's say, look, coach, I'm in this game. Frank, you're such a gentleman. <laughs> such class. <laughs> From the 39-yard line, Thomas Sanders straight ahead to the 33. Yeah, what they would like to do is score and get that goose egg off the board, though. Yeah. 41 to nothing looks doesn't look a whole lot better. 41 to seven, but. And he's sticking aboard the shutout. You go back to 82 in Mike Ditka's second game as a head coach. They were shut out by New Orleans. It's the last time the Bears were blank. Second and four. And Harbaugh gets dropped at the 35-yard line. Kevin Fagan. Fagan missed last week with a pulled hamstring, so he's at least one 49er that's coming back. We saw Freddie Solomon and another great receiver <laughs> of the past, Aliou R.C. Owens. Used to be on the receiving end of so many of Wyatt Tittles. <laughs> Aliou's into the end zone. In case you weren't around in those days, that. Just meant that Tittle would hang it up high and RC would go up and grab it. Third and six from the 35. Look out. Harbaugh. Uh, he the was in the grass back at the 42. And that's a gigantic sack. What is that? Eight plus the long one. 50. Oh. <laughs> Larry Roberts gets the sack. That took him out of field goal range. That took him out of punting range. 23-yard sack. Larry Roberts coming in from the top of your screen. What he did right on this play was keep his contain. He's the outside rusher. His job is not to let the quarterback get outside. He played it as good as you could play it and comes up with the big sack, the big loss, and now the Bears flawless this evening are going to put it away and Jim there ain't nothing you're going to tell him that he's going to buy the coach I had this in mind that goes with the night also yeah four kick by Wagner two more flags go down at the 50 yard line Jim McMahon nursing the hamstring and we'll find out about him next week when the Bears host Seattle Another streak that will come to an end tonight is that string of Mike Tomzak starts. It's a different football team. 49 is good. They're playing right to their optimum, but what happened to this Bears football team? I don't know. The one we saw the 14th of September that dismembered the Giants was an awesome looking machine. Same guys, same jerseys, no resemblance. 35-yard line, Cribs. Out to the 42. There is some drama in this one. If you bet the overs and unders, <laughs> it's 45. You don't expect one team to have to do it all. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah. I got the over, but I don't know about the under. Yeah. <laughs> the under is not cooperating. <laughs> Three fifteen to go. Yeah. 
Second and three at the 42 yard line. Joe Cribbs again. Cutting it back. And taking it down to the 45 of Chicago. That little move to the inside actually was just on Joe's mind to keep that ball inbound. So broke it back against the grain. Big opening. And again, that's reflective of the Bears defense. And of course, this was all over. But this is not the way this team has played over the past few years. This has been a tough, hard hitting football team, a team that would pursue. That time there was no pursuit. And Cribs almost broke that one all the way. He would have got through over and under. First and 10. 49ers at the 45 yard line 220 to play. Sydney. Gaining a couple. And that will take us down to the two minute warning. It's been a stunner. Who would have believed it? We'd go to the two-minute warning and leave you with this graphic. Chicago Bears' worst defeats. 41-0 at the moment. Candlestick Park in San Francisco with two minutes to go. Al Michaels, Frank Gifford, and Dan Deardorff. Mike Ditka and his Bears will board an airplane. And those skies will not be very friendly tonight. <laughs> Certainly not around the Bears head coach as he watches his team get pummeled 41 to nothing and the 49ers can run it out at the 42 yard line. Cribs turns it back the other way and has the first down as he gets to the 34 yard line. We are reduced to this. The NFC Championship game would be played the 17th of January. If it's here, just take a look at the, the bottom line. The average temperature over the past seven years in San Francisco on January 17th has been 50. In Chicago, it has been 17. Well, this definitely will win the graphic award for oh, the yeah. most mm -hmm. numbers ever put on the <laughs> screen at one time yep. in any graphic in any NFL football game. It's like a game you find on the comics pages. No, not necessarily. We once did results of a numbers. semifinal in motorcycles on ice in Inzel, West Germany that had three more. <laughs> <laughs> motorcycles <laughs> on ice. Well, we want to tell you that tonight's game, as always, produced by the indomitable one, Ken Wolf, directed by Larry Cam, our technical director, Joe Chavo, halftime producer. Mike Pearl, John McGinnis, our halftime associate producer, associate director Rob Biner, Bill Freeberger, our tech manager, Bob Simon, our unit manager, Hal Schmitz, our telecommunications manager, Bruce Clark and Carrie Lorberfeld, the assistants to the producers, Steve Hurt, research and information, and that graphic as well. Joe Castellano, computer graphics, our statistician George Hill, and spotter Kelly Hayes of Malibu went home after the third quarter. And this telecast is presented by the authority of the National Football League as it attended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or any other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is totally prohibited. And this game, mercifully for the Chicago Bears, is coming to a close. And Al, unbelievable, that's all I can say. And Bill Walsh has watched his team two of the last three weeks dominate class opposition. They beat Cleveland handily two weeks ago. And now the 49ers by themselves own the best record of the National Football League, a mark of 11 wins, two losses, control their own fate, and with victories over Atlanta and the LA Rams could cement home field advantage in the playoffs. That'll do it. 41 to nothing, 49ers. This ABC Sports Exclusive has been brought to you by Bud Light, proud sponsor of the 1980 U.S. Olympic team. By Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Tandy Computers. There is no better value. And by the U.S. Army. Learn how to get an edge on life. Be all you can be. This Saturday, ABC Sports presents top senior and LPGA golfers teaming up in the Mazda Champions live. Then ABC's college basketball features Kansas at North Carolina State. And 
next week on Monday Night Football, the Dallas Cowboys take on Charles White and the Los Angeles Rams from Anaheim. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.